Sup, ladies and gentlemen, Akulanya, and welcome back to each of one of you, of course, if you are new to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us. I am very happy to have you here. Of course, in today's video, we have Chris Clakey speaking out about why he left Blizzard Entertainment after 13 years and that's definitely something we have to talk about if you want to talk about this and other things more generally live with me the link to twitch is in the description down below every tuesday to friday or every sunday right here on youtube and this sunday is going to be huge because shadowlands is so close now can you guys feel it it's close and i am generally very very hyped for it anyways uh, let's jump into the video. Remember to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and smash that bell. It does help out the channel a ton. But most importantly, just enjoy the video. The video starts off with Chris Clakey uh, sort of discussing how he started at Blizzard Entertainment, where it all led, what was the first problems that he had to solve, and all of that is great, it's very interesting, it's a lot of fun to listen to, but in terms of what the video is all about, in terms of what I take, took away from this video, the, the most important bits really start after the halfway mark, and that's what I want to focus on here. As I said, uh, or I don't think I said this, I think I said it in a previous take before I deleted that take and now I'm doing this take, but as I will say now, I will have a link to the original video in the description down below if you want to go watch it. You absolutely, I think, should. But anyways, he starts a blizzard, there's a bunch of problems, there's a bunch of problems that need to be solved, and he solves a lot of them. And he goes through this entire 13-year process uh, of what it took to actually get there. He does say right from the beginning, and it is very clear as you're watching the video, he, he this is not meant to throw shade at Blizzard Entertainment. This is not meant to throw shade at any of the developers that are still working there. He loves that company, he loves the friends that he made there, but it was time for him to leave, and it really does come across this way. Now, I do want to just make one thing very clear before we get into the meat and potatoes of this video for anyone that is interested in even having a candid conversation about this gaming is extremely subjective what is good for one person will not be good for another what i love and what you love will not be the same thing and that is absolutely fine but we still have to be able to have these conversations you can't just go well i enjoy the game so fuck you because at the end of the day i've been playing this game since vanilla if i have certain problems that i think is important to discuss then you should afford me that opportunity to do so and the same for you if you have issues that i might not agree with but they are legitimate issues for you then we should be able to have that discussion it does not however mean that we will ever get to a place where everyone is absolutely happy at best you can get to a place where everyone is about 70 percent happy and 30 percent pissed off about the changes in the game i think that's the best we can do so as long as we can remember that we'll be fine with this conversation one of his first big concepts that he discusses in this interview is the main pillar concept that existed in Classic. And really, if you listen to his video, you'll very quickly realize it was Classic that sort of ripped him out of that spiral, that cycle of just creating content, expansion after expansion. It was Classic where he had the chance to, for the first time, look at World of Warcraft and say, what the hell happened? How do we get from that to this what what went wrong what went right where are we now and he discusses this this great concept which everyone that's ever watched a video about world of warcraft classic where the developers talk about the initial design philosophy around classic would have heard this before the game is the main character the player is the story and the community is the content. That was the main pillar of not really just World of Warcraft uh, back in the day, but actually every MMO that launched more than a decade ago, decade and a half ago at this point, all of these older MMOs had that basic structure. The game really was just a theme park that you would provide the player with, and then the player would dive into this and, and they would do all sorts of magical shit because at the end of the day, 
that was the main takeaway. It was that the game is the main character. The game is where everything is supposed to happen. The player is the story. Players create their own stories in games. Players have their own stories in games. Anyone that has been playing World of Warcraft since Classic will know you have so many stories. Stories that is far more important to you than any story that the game could ever have told you. Stories that you remember. If we started talking around a campfire about our the war days of World of Warcraft, we would all have stories of things that happened, things that we look back to and look back on fondly. These were, those were the days where the players, we were the story, and the community is the content, which again, a player on its own can't create content. But if you took, if you took a hundred people, you put them in a room, they would very quickly come up with a way to entertain themselves. So the community does drive the content, so to speak. The community does build that content. That's the first thing that he talks about. And he does go into detail about how in Classic, those pillars were very much established. They were very important to the developers in general. In retail, those concepts are still there, but they're no longer as defined. And that's a theme that's gonna really stand through the whole of this video, right? All throughout the video, you will find out that there is still these basic pillars or underlying pillars of game design, but they're extremely watered down and the lines are extremely blurred. And in a lot of cases, there's just this disconnect between what the game is and what the game needs to be or what they want the game to be. And this is something that is gonna become prevalent, but I did wanna highlight that just before we continue with the rest of this video. Okay, so he starts off by giving examples of what he means. And again, these examples are great, but where these examples stem from, in my opinion, is the single most important topic that we have to discuss. He talks about the view of the game, the goal of the game, and that that has become muddied. As if really the game doesn't know what it wants to be and he goes through this entire process of explaining how if you want to build a boat for example you want to build a ship you don't tell every single individual person you know what they have to do you don't tell this guy to get the wood you don't tell this guy to do that you just tell them where they're going you ex you explain to them you convince them that they that they long for the open sea and everyone will sort of just start building and everyone will just sort of pick up and start doing the things necessary to get to the open sea. And he does talk about how that is no longer present in World of Warcraft when he went around speaking to different developers because really, as he explains himself, it was really at the launch of Classic that he started to look at the retail game and realize, what is this? What am I doing? I'm not enjoying this. I don't like the direction that the game went in. Now, there is something worrisome about this, but at the same time, there was a lot of reassuring things that he said in this video as well. When he said that for the very first time, that he left because he was unhappy with the state and the vision of the game, I thought to myself, oh my God, here we go. All right, so that basically means that he was alone in that. Whenever he spoke to other developers, they were like, what are you talking about? This is the best the game has ever been. And um, it turns out not really. When he spoke to other developers, when he asked the other developers questions about what exactly it is that they're doing, very few, according at least to what he says, very few knew. In fact, I, th I think he used the words most didn't have an answer. They didn't know what the goal for World of Warcraft is. Now, about a year ago, I can't remember exactly when this video was that I made. Uh, I, I made a video around about the middle of BFA where I said exactly that. World of Warcraft feels like a game that, that simply doesn't know what it wants to be at its core. It feels like a game that is sort of just thrashing about, throwing everything at the wall and hoping that something sticks, even if those things don't really go together, still just the hope that, that something will stick. A good example of this is the power or the borrowed power systems that they have in World of Warcraft, 
Borrowed Power systems do not go with hardcore PvP or PvE content. They do not go together. If you want to make a competitive game, a competitive MMO, where raiding and PvP is sort of the hallmarks of your game, you cannot have borrowed power systems in it because it creates a barrier to entry and most people that want to raid at that very high level don't want arbitrary barriers to entry. They want their skill to be the only barrier to entry. So again, this is something where the vision of the game doesn't appear to be fleshed out. It feels like the game wants to be a million things at once, but at the same time, it doesn't know how to be anything. Another good example of this that, that I think a lot of people don't realize, and he talks about this in the video as well, is the story of World of Warcraft. Like he said at the beginning, World of Warcraft used to be, it always had a story, let's be real. There's never been an expansion in World of Warcraft where no story existed. But the story in World of Warcraft was always very, shall we say, overarching. It was sort of the skeleton of the story with everything else really happening outside of the game. Now, don't get me wrong, as someone who cares very deeply about the lore, I love the fact that the story has become something bigger in World of Warcraft, but anyone that has been on the channel for any period of time will know that I have major criticisms about Blizzard's direction with the stories. And the big reason again here is goals. What do you want to be? If you want to be a story MMO, you cannot have arcade style questing. Again, a, a, a clear example of where World of Warcraft doesn't know what it wants to be. Do you want to be a story MMO? In that case, jump into the fucking world and uh, fix your questing. The questing needs to be far closer to something like Elder Scrolls Online, something like Witcher 3. You have to have proper RPG storylines, proper RPG story questing. The problem is World of Warcraft has this, we want to be story first, and you can see that there is an extreme push for story and how the story in World of Warcraft is meant to develop. But none of that siphons through to the rest of the game design. The quest is still very much geared towards this hardcore MMO, where PvP and PvE is the main focuses. Why? Because the quest is actually just a barrier to get to max level. You have to go through all of these quests, do them as quickly as possible, so that you can get to max level. Once you're at max level, that's when you start doing the things that the game has. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's how World of Warcraft used to be. That's how I fell in love with World of Warcraft and coincidentally fell in love with the story. The problem is, the story isn't being done justice in World of Warcraft outside of the box and the cinematics because the game itself isn't a story mmo there is no effort being put to making it a story mmo and this is where we get once again to the muddied goalposts no one really seems to know what needs to happen where Next, he starts talking about the human element in world of warcraft and how that really is and i think most people can admit to it the human element is completely and utterly missing from World of Warcraft. When you think about the classification of World of Warcraft, it is classified as an MMO RPG. The RPG bit means role-playing game, and that's perfectly fine. You can have single-player games that is great RPG. See Witcher 3 or Cyberpunk 2077 when it launches next month. Uh, hopefully. Who knows? But the MMO bit really does put some kind of responsibility on the developer of that game to put the player first. The player must be the central focus of the game. MMO stands for Massive Multiplayer Online, meaning you are not playing this game alone. This is not a single player video game. This is a game that is meant to be enjoyed with thousands, if not millions of people around the world. Right now in World of Warcraft, the only reason it can still be called an MMO is because when you run inside the world, sometimes other people run past you and those are not NPCs. As for your reliance on these other people, that no longer exists. And so we get back to his original pillars of World of Warcraft. 
The world is the character, the player is the story, and the community is the content. It's as if World of Warcraft lost the player is the story. In other words, yes, you have an amazing story in World of Warcraft, and as a lore channel, no one knows that better than me. But you forgot who should be the main focus of the story, the player. It should be about the stories that players create. Your game really should just give us a canvas to create our stories on. Either that or you must change the focus of the game to a story MMO, much like Elder Scrolls Online, where now the story is the front and center, the rest of the game doesn't really matter. But you have to figure that out because right now the player is suffering. The player no longer matters. Their stories are no longer being told. Then of course he gets into something that we've spoken to at length on this channel. Extrinsic versus intrinsic development styles. And what is the focus of World of Warcraft? And as he explains here, World of Warcraft has started to focus so much on the extrinsic value of the game and the extrinsic uh, rewards of the game rather than focusing at all on the intrinsic and really he makes a point in this where he says world of warcraft started to focus so much on the progression systems and the reward systems within the game rather than focusing on the things really that only an mmo can do if you think about guilds single player games can't do guilds they they can do versions of it but it's usually very watered down and nowhere near as good right single player games cannot do massive 20 man raids or even 40 man city raids or things like that there are things that mmos can do remarkably well and these are the very things according at least to uh, chris that world of warcraft no longer focuses on there is zero focus on doing the things that mmos can do well there is a massive focus on doing things that historically MMOs can't do well, like progression systems. When you're gonna have this giant progression system that is sort of an expansion only event, this isn't really something that you can do in a game where you're playing with millions of other people because it has to be 100% balanced around every single person's whim, around what every single person wants to play and how they want to play it. These are far easier to do in things like single player games, where really it does only boil down to what the player themselves wants to do, rather than what the community suggests the player should be doing. At the end of the day, as far as Chris is concerned, these progression systems have sort of taken world of warcraft in a different direction and i do want to clarify once again i said this at the beginning of the video but i feel like it must be said again world of warcraft gaming is a subjective beast everyone is going to love different things i don't like or even well actually the correct word would be i despise the progression systems of world of warcraft i fucking loathe the progression systems of world of warcraft i would much prefer world of warcraft go back to a time where the guild was the focus the raids and dungeons was really the only progression systems that you had because there they were the places where you would get your gear and pvp was a progression system in and of itself only meant for pvp players this is sort of what i long for in world of warcraft but it is subjective you will not see it the same way and that is okay but we should be able to have a conversation about a middle ground where both of us are somewhat happy with where the game is we can't be 100 percent happy but maybe we can be 70 percent happy he ends the video once again talking about division and talking about how when talking to other developers it is clear that they don't know and one thing that i took away from this as i said that is so positive he doesn't think that the vision for world of warcraft the main vision ever really changed he believes that that vision is still there. They still want the world as the main as the main character, the player as the story, and the community as the content. That is still what they want. He says the problem is that it seems like even talking to his fellow developers, everyone seems to be confused about what the story should be, what the game should be. They don't know what the vision should be. And this becomes a question of, is that Ian Hasikostas' fault? Is his ability to communicate 
his his vision for World of Warcraft just not there? Is it maybe not just his fault? Is it maybe a fault from the top down where things have become so muddied that no one really knows what the vision for the game should be moving forward? One thing is clear. Blizzard is trying to cater to everyone, and as we know, if you try to keep everyone happy, you usually end up keeping no one happy and not even keeping yourself happy. You have to make a decision. What is it that we want to be, and then be that? There is hope, of course, Shadowlands being the third expansion that Blizzard is trying this grand experiment of engagement, of uh, player systems, and most likely, it will also fail. Not this, the expansion. The expansion, I think, is going to be amazing. I think the progression systems will fail. Once again, they'll provide such a nightmare experience for developers trying to fix them that hopefully after Shadowlands, Blizzard lets go of this dream and realizes that this clearly isn't working. He ends the video, though, on a pretty sad note, and that's one of the things I'll touch on here. He wants to be part of the next big company that makes the next big virtual world. And for a long time, he believed that that company will be World of Warcraft, will be Blizzard, at least. Not necessarily World of Warcraft, but Blizzard. He actually did think for a very long time that World of Warcraft would make a comeback, that it is once again going to claim the crown of the ultimate MMO, the, the game that everyone wants to be and everyone wants to play. He no longer thinks that that's the case. He literally said he's gonna start looking at the next company that can make the next big virtual world because that's where he wants to be now whoever that is you can let me know in the comment section down below i have no idea it could be ash of creation it could be elder scrolls it could be final fantasy i don't know who that will be hopefully it is world of warcraft hopefully world of warcraft stays with us for a very long time but that can only happen when Blizzard shifts their focus. Their focus needs to go back to a more fundamental MMO first mindset rather than this mindset of are we an MMO? Are we not? Who knows? But of course, I have taken more than enough of your time. I want to hear from you in the comment section down below. Did you watch the original uh, sort of vlog that, that uh, Chris Cl uh, Clakey put out? What did you think of it? What did you think of my video? Is there things that you agree, disagree with? Let me know in that comment section down below. Please remember to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and smash that bell if you enjoyed this video. It does help out the channel a ton. And then to everyone that is supporting the channel over on Patreon, Twitch subs, and of course the YouTube channel members, thank you so much for that support. It does remove our reliance on YouTube's algorithms and, and just the unnecessary ad system and how exactly you're going to make money or how you're going to be able to live the next month. I want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. My name is Akalon, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out, fam.